chilly. What's going on everybody? Oregon Motorcycle back today with another episode. And I'm out and about in Oregon. This road is a little moist. Must have got some rain here. There's a chance of rain this evening. Yeah, I'm out in the Ripplebrook area, which is not really that far from my house. But I've been riding for like four hours. <laughs> so uh, I went and did some exploring like um, in the Forest Grove area, kind of like getting close to the Tillamook Forest area and trying to get up in there a little bit. But a lot of these roads I had planned on going up and getting up in there, um, they're, they're, they're private roads and it's, you know, the, of course the map doesn't tell you that or my Google Maps or whatever doesn't really tell you that. And I thought I could get, you know, up in the, to the Tillamook Forest like from the Forest Grove area on like say um, the east side of the range. And uh, so, and I don't know, I goofed around over there for a little while this morning and um, I had to go to uh, Plan B, which Plan B was coming over here to uh, the Ripplebrook area. And um, we're out moto camping today. Gonna see if we can't find a camp spot up here. I know we can. Um, there's lots of dispersed camping up here and I, I got all kinds of areas up here to camp in that I've camped here before and areas I haven't camped that I've scoped so we should have no problem finding a campground up here um, I got the CB 500X loaded down let me tell you <laughs> uh, can definitely feel the weight on the bike um, you know yeah no so yeah I'm gonna go check out this, there's a lake or a reservoir or whatever. I'm gonna go check out and see if I can get down around closer to it. Maybe camp somewhere down in there, which I don't think I'm gonna be able to, but I'm just gonna go check it out anyways. And then if, you know, if not, then we're just gonna go back and go back towards uh, Lake Harriet. Um, and we're gonna camp somewhere in between ooh, that reservoir and uh, Lake Harriet. So right here, if we go down that way, there's a Clackamas River in that pipe. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, if we go down that way, that'll be uh, Lake Harriet. See, I mean, you can camp all back up in here and stuff. It's awesome. People camping right here. So, yeah, baby. It's on. Woo! So I don't have any firewood or anything or no way to make a fire. I mean, I have a lighter. I brought a lighter. But there seems to be firewood everywhere up here, so... Might have a fire tonight, might not. But if not, I got my cooking stove, I brought food to make, uh, all that good stuff. I'm gonna show you guys all my camping gear and everything I brought and yeah. So this is my first camping trip on this bike. And this is my first like moto camping trip of 2020. And, and so it's like, you know, I haven't camped from a motorcycle only but a few times and and that was really just popping a tent to sleep and then continue on my travel. This is a trip purposely made to go, you know, do some moto camping. And try out my gear, try out my luggage. Um, just, I mean, packing it up. I've got, boy, these tires, these tires feel good. I haven't aired them down or anything and they feel better than the stock tires aired down on this road. I was on some more dirt earlier today over, you know, by the Forest Grove area and I was on some gravel roads and stuff and didn't feel as hooked up but this is a direct comparison because I was just up here, what, two weeks ago? You guys probably caught that video and I didn't have nowhere near this traction that I'm, I'm experiencing right now. And that was with 20 pounds on the tires. I've got 30 pounds in them right now, so. It's feeling good, feeling good. There's another road up in there. I could probably go camping up in there. So yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, just gonna camp one night. This is kind of like, you know, just like a little shakedown. Oh, going back to, okay, so my luggage. My luggage is like, you know, it's it's kind of put together or whatever. And I can tell you that uh, 
that I, I'm really I want I want some different luggage <laughs> Um, I mean these side bags are cool and everything and they're good for putting around town but I think if I'm really gonna load up a bunch of stuff then I'm gonna need more luggage all these roads that ooh, pay attention all these roads that go up there maybe some I don't know we'll see whatever the future brings but I've got other stuff I want to get first besides uh, so that road is closed and I believe that's the road to go down to the lake but there might be one more on the other side of the lake or somebody up here so the it's not really a lake it's a reservoir or whatever so you can hear these uh there it is you can hear these tires grabbing rocks and throwing them up in the the fenders and stuff so yeah according to the maps like there's some roads that go down in there or something but Oh, we've seen that one. Look, there's another one. Let's go a little further and see if I can find a road that drops down in there. But anyways, yeah, it's Frog Lake. Frog Lake Reservoir. Oh, there's people down there on that road there. Let's go schmeck it out. Oh, but it's gated. Okay, so we just checked it out. All right. like a vibration up here or something oh oh day oh geez it's my freaking windshield about to fall off all right we got to fix that or just I got to pull it back up in there up this road here and see what's up so yeah I'm just exploring I'm just taking some of these roads up that go off the main road to go up a little bit and see see what they entail like there's just roads everywhere Woo. here it's funny how there's just a clear cut right here and then yeah these tires are awesome I mean, for what they are. Oh, <laughs> it's slick though still. It's a little muddy right here. It's muddy, but it's like, it's packed gravel. It's weird. I need to go to the bathroom. Oh, here's a good camping spot here. This looks awesome. It's already got a fire pit and everything. This spot's pretty cool. Well, we're gonna look around a little bit more. Let's see uh, if we can find anything else. Sweet. 
up here off-roading some decent tires gonna go camping life is good We're up here in Sasquatch territory Let's see if we can come across a Sasquatch talk to you guys before about Sasquatch up here in the Estacada area what's going on up here is this the end of the road looks like it might be I would say it is okay so there's that campground down there oh come on why people make a mess up here come on people take your trash back with you so just a road that goes to nowhere Yeah. <laughs> See, it's, it's slick. Then you got these like... The gravel patches, then you can hook up really good. So it's like, ooh, shit. <laughs> so yeah, I like this spot right here. Oh, shit. All right, that is super slick right there. <laughs> <laughs> Almost lost the front end right there. It's weird. It's like you got awesome traction, and then all of a sudden, it just there's mud patches on top. Getting hungry too. I brought some snacks, some beef jerky, some oranges, and I brought some stuff to cook on my stove. I uh, brought um, brought pasta cheese and mushrooms which is gonna be really good I'm gonna put my little camping stove to the test boil in some water oh that was all went into neutral I wasn't expecting that Yeah, I think we'll get back to the main road and go down a little bit more and just, we'll hit the next road that goes up like this. Go up there and see what we can, see what we can find. Man, this bike is awesome. It's so fun to be able to do this and like, it's a good road bike. And then I can come up here and get on stuff like this. Loving it, loving it, loving it. Puts a smile on my face. This spot down here looks pretty cool because it's off the road, but there's people down in there, so. I don't know what they're doing. Oh yeah, they're down there shooting. All right, I just heard a shot. Sweet, we might do some shooting up here. I brought my uh, pistol. Might do a little, little target practice shooting up here. So yeah, I think they just got some rain. My cooling fans on it's the first time I've heard that thing come on well I don't want to go down there it's just gonna be a bunch of rubbish all right back on the main road go through a little mud It was like driving on asphalt, getting back on this gravel road after going through that other crap. Okay, here's another road. What 
do we have up here? This one doesn't look as promising as the other one. Eh, maybe. That's slick though too. <laughs> oh, it's going to get into a mud bogging pit here. Yeah, this mud is just super, super snotty slick. I need to turn around here. Tell you what, maybe I'll go up here and do my little spin it on the kickstand or something if I can. I think we're just going to go back to that spot. Set up camp there. And maybe we'll do some more exploring tomorrow. This might be a little challenging to do on this slope. With all this weight on the back. Oh yeah, it just wants to this wants to sit on the back. Oh there we go. Alright, that worked out good. Yeah, it's just super, super slick in the mud. But you know, and that's kind of the all the reviews I read on this on these tires said they don't do good in the mud. But whatever. They do good on the dry stuff. The rocky stuff, I mean even in the in the moist stuff or whatever. Yeah, I think we're gonna have a fire because we got all that wood over there. Yeah, baby. Woo! All right, so I got my tent set up, and I just ate some um, some canned soup or whatever, just like chicken pot pie soup or whatever. So I'm gonna show you guys around camp, and I'm gonna show you my gear and setup right now, and uh, how I got all my stuff up here. So start with the kitchen. <laughs> I mean, boy, there's a lot of people shooting up here. Um, that's my new mini stove, and that's the soup I ate right there, and uh, it has all the silverware and everything which is pretty cool, it has like some pots and pans and a, and a cup that goes with it, which is pretty cool. And uh, I brought a chair that was on the back. I saw, I've already taken that off the back here on the motorcycle. Um, this is my tent, it's just a cheapy Amazon tent, but it's pretty sweet. It's, it's classified as a two person tent, but it, it's tight with me and my jacket and helmet and stuff in there, so. But that's pretty cool, I like the way it looks when it's set up and I got the rain fly on it right now. And that kind of thing so we do have a fire pit here and plenty of firewood everywhere so definitely gonna have a fire tonight but anyways um so i have i'll start up here in the front with my uh, tank bag which is where i keep um keeping all my chargers my, and my extra batteries memory cards um little tripod and stuff like that for the phone camera um and then it makes a cool little glove holder too while you're waiting or whatever um what else do i have in here i have Oh yeah, like sunglasses, um, alcohol wipes, 
and um, oh, another ball of vodka too. So just the stuff that you want handy or whatever. Um, back here, you guys have seen my luggage video before. If you haven't, check it out. It's going to be up in there in the top. Um, but I've got it maxed out right now. So basically like this side, it's a little lopsided because I've been messing with stuff right now. I had the, the chair, the blue chair right there wrapped up and then it was, it was right here. Um, so on one side, I basically have like my kitchen and then on the other side is the bathroom and bedroom. <laughs> and then in the main compartment, I just, uh, I had my tent in there, which was rolled up. And like I said, the tent's already set up, so there it is. I have a blanket here that I'm going to use. It's probably going to get a little chilly tonight. And then I have my, my rain gear here and there. And then I have some extra water here. And that's basically it in this one. Um, and then, you know, I have my drone here in this one. And then up here, I have like rope and um, a first aid kit and a ratchet strap and some miscellaneous stuff, tie strap and stuff like that. Um, Oh, yeah, and I have, um, and, you know, I have my tools and everything underneath my seat. And then I also have a tire gauge um, in the saddlebag. So for food, I'll show you guys more food tonight when I cook. But basically, I've already taken some stuff out. I've um, got cold waters and Gatorades in there, oranges, beef jerky, some towels, another canned soup. And then I have pasta down in there too, pasta, mushrooms, and cheese. And we're going to make that tonight for dinner. You can see, like, when I mess with stuff, like, it sags or whatever. You got to keep this zip. So, anyways. And then over here, I brought some sandals, but I probably won't be using them in this tall grass. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, yeah. I got the machete right here. So, I got it strapped up here, tie strapped there, and then it's going through this loop here, and it fits perfect. So, it's totally strapped in. Easy access. Basically, in here, I got the toiletries. Um, and then I got some extra, I didn't have room over there. So I got some coffee stuff to make for the morning and some, uh, to make some oatmeal and stuff for the, in the morning. I got that kind of stuff in there, and, you know, uh, soap and toothpaste and a toothbrush. And here, here's my clothes. Got a beanie. I got a headlamp, a sweatshirt, and just some extra socks and some long johns and that kind of stuff. And I didn't bring too much clothes, but this is packed full of clothes, socks and stuff or whatever. So just brought the necessities. Basically the only thing I brought extra was the chair. And when I got here, there's two stumps here. You really don't need the chair, but it is kind of comfortable sitting in the chair after getting off the bike. So I kind of do like it. It's big though. Um, so yeah, this ground's really soft. I got a rock propping up the, the kickstand there. So I'm just going to, I'm going to finish setting up uh, my tent. I'm going to get my sleeping bag rolled out in there. Let me show you my sleeping bag real quick. So this bag fits, you know, the sleeping bag and tent and the extra blanket. But here it is. You can see how small it is. It's like all compact. So, yeah. And you guys can get all this stuff off Amazon. This is just cheaper Amazon stuff. It's nothing special. Same with the tent. So, gets the job done. I'll see how many uses I get out of it. Um, what I'm really excited about is my stove over there. So, I'll check back in with you guys later.
Time to rise and shine. It's morning time. Gonna make some breakfast. Then we're gonna get camp packed up. And uh I'm gonna see about hitting some trails around here. So it did rain last night. Off and on a couple times woke me up. Um so I didn't have rain protection for the packs. So I just put these two uh, bags over it, which seemed to do the trick. You can see some water accumulated on the side bags, which I do have rain covers for those. So anyways, a little wet last night, a little wet. So I had mentioned that I got some coffee, but in fact, it's this um, Total Indulgence Rich Hazelnut Cappuccino, um, which is basically like a fancy uh, hot chocolate or whatever. But I did have a cup last night before I went to bed and it's really, really, really good. So um, we got some water heating up here. This little stove is just awesome. Um, really super impressed with it, you know, really super impressed. And I made a fire last night, but it was kind of uh, short-winded. All the wood around here is really, really moist and damp. And um, I did collect, do some good collecting last night and I collected up all the stuff to start it. And I got it started up and it started okay. But as soon as you try to add anything to it, you can just hear the wood hissing and, and pissing out. And you know, you can see the liquid actually squeezing out of the, the stuff. So uh, I just got tired of feeding it twigs and gave up. So anyways, it's a beautiful morning. Sun's coming up, and uh, I'm gonna have some cappuccino and get camp packed up, and we're gonna get on the road. here I'm gonna get through some of the slick mud here it's pretty nice up here pretty nice it is uh let's see it's a quarter till nine it's not too bad it's so like I said we're gonna cruise we're gonna cruise by Lake Harriet so according to the map um, you can make it I could make a loop all the way back around, which would be uh, pretty sweet. Now I tried to do that a couple weeks back and uh, there was snow, too much snow. So I couldn't, couldn't keep going. So we're gonna try it out today and see, hopefully we don't hit any gates or snow and we can go all the way through and uh, get on back to Oregon City. But if we can't, we're just, we'll just turn around. There'll still be some beautiful scenery either way. So it's nice out here. Um, so yeah, sleeping last night, it was it was okay. Um, there's a couple of improvements I need to make to my setup. But other than that, it was, you know, it was okay. Um, didn't hear any Sasquatch last night or didn't really hear anything except um, an owl a couple times. And that was pretty cool. Oh, I, I did, I heard some coyotes last night. That's right, I did. That's pretty nice. A little waterfall that goes all the way up in there. Sweet. The beauties of Oregon. The beauties of Oregon. Slow for the 
curves, slow for the curves. There's another waterfall. Waterfalls on every corner, folks. Every corner. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty. Sounds cool, too. So does my motorbike. Oh, there's another one. So you guys thought I was joking about a waterfall in every corner, huh? Look at that one back up in there. All right, I know there's a lot more to come too. <laughs> I know these roads pretty well. Not like curve for curve, but I've stopped at a lot of these waterfalls and gotten some cool shots before. So in case you guys are wondering exactly where we're at, we are exactly in between um, Harriet Lake and Ripplebrook Ranger Station on the back roads. Now there's two different ways to get there from the Ripplebrook Ranger Station. One is the paved road, um, but the other one is the dirt road. The dirt road is literally right after the, the Ranger Station. You hang a left, and if you want to go up the paved way, you go down, uh, I think it's there's a campground right there. You go past the campground, you hang another left. And there'll be a sign there, it'll say, uh, it'll say uh, Timothy Lake, because that's another way to get to Timothy Lake instead of going all the way through um, like by Mount Hood and government camp and stuff over there. Um, so, but yeah, I, I like this road back in here and it's fun. And when we pass Lake Harriet, we're gonna be getting back more onto these dirt roads and going back up in there. And I know there's some more campgrounds up in there and I've been on some other back roads back in there. And when it snows up here in the winter time, it's a popular um, snowmobile place. Um, I'll show you like a little staging area and stuff there, but I'll check back in with you guys at uh, Harriet Lake. All right, we made it to uh, Lake Harriet. It's like a new fence they put up right there. Let's see if we can look down in here and see. Oh yeah, there you go. This is right where the dam is. Oh. Right there's the dam. down there there's some good fishing here I've done a lot of fishing here um, there's trout rainbow trout there's brown trout and there's um, there's kokanee there's kokanee salmon in there if you can believe that it's pretty deep I think it's like 80 or 90 deep, feet deep in this area right here and then it just gradually rises up to the end over here by the campground to where it's like two feet deep for a big area you can just literally see the the bottom and you can see like the trout swimming around and stuff in there it's awesome so i've camped at this campground a couple times i've camped on the outskirts here a couple times and then you know we just camped five miles on the road but today's saturday so there's going to be people fishing here i can already see some cars down there there's kind of a good view through the trees i don't know if you guys can see it so we're like in this valley here oh and there are tons of bald eagles here i think they come here to nest to have their babies or whatever but you can literally sit here and watch the bald eagles. They'll fly over your head. Oh, there's people right down there fishing. Um, and uh, you can see them go down and and pick up uh, fish. They they eat the trout here. You know the stalkers. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty nice up here. Pretty nice. 
So and you'll see deer up here sometimes too. I've seen some deer up here, a handful, but no Sasquatch yet. I don't know what's up with that. And they, they've really changed this place up in the last year or so. Um, I'll show you guys right now. They put this dock on, on out here, then they stopped all the parking. So you used to be able to park here, and this wasn't paved. This was, this was gravel. So yeah, you can't park anymore. And then there's like there was a little ramp here. You could put in float tubes and little boats, but now you can walk on this dock here and fish off the dock which is pretty cool but it's really shallow right in here in this area so and this is being fed by the north fork of the clackamas river uh, which goes up to timothy lake which is a huge lake up there I've done a lot of camping and fishing there too and uh, so you can kind of i don't know if you guys can see the bottom right there but you can totally see the bottom but yeah this camp kind of shut down that are shut down they even cover up the signs and stuff. Man, take everything down and just say closed. Wow. So and that's like this is the campground for Lake Harriet. And right on the other side of the campground right there is the river. You should be able to see it right here. Which like I said is the North Fork of the Clackamas River. Yeah, there it is right there. So what we do, we come out here to the main back on the main road and we'll keep going up. We'll follow the river up for a little bit, but then there's a turn off there, and that's the staging area for the snowmobiles. And um, I have a story. All right, it's story time. Um, okay, so I was going up up here, and it was May, I believe. I believe it was May. And we're gonna pass by this gate up here, okay? And so and I'm in my car. I, I had my little uh, my little red sports car, and I was up here. And uh, I was just tooling around. I had my drone and I was doing some photography and I think I had my fishing pole. I always have my fishing pole. In fact, I have my fishing pole right now, but I didn't show you guys. I have a collapsible, a new one I'm trying out that I never used before. And I brought it with me because I thought I was gonna be camping by a reservoir up in, there's another waterfall, up in uh, the Tillamook Forest, but that no, didn't happen. So anyways, um, so yeah, I'm cruising up here in my sports car. I'm, you know, I take that gravel road, or, or actually it was the paved road, um, but it turns to gravel or whatever, right? Okay, especially, and then at the gate, it's all gravel. So the gate that I'm talking about, that I keep mentioning, that's up here that we're gonna pass, is the gate to go into Timothy Lake. And see, they close that road during the winter time because they, they get a lot of snow up there. And there's campgrounds all up in there. The, Timothy Lake is awesome. Um, so I'm cruising up in my sports car and I go up there, I get to the gate and the gates open, you know, it's, it's open. I'm thinking, okay, you know, it's, and like I said, this was May. So I, I cruise all on this dirt road for 10 miles and I get to Timothy Lake and, you know, I noticed that it was really, it was really quiet. So quiet as in, <laughs> I didn't see one single person up there and I was just like, what in the world? Like, I didn't understand. I, you know, I was like, what the hell's going on? So I'm up there for like probably a solid hour. I fly my drone all around the lake. Okay, here's the main road I'm talking about where we get on and we're going to follow the, the river. There's the river. Okay. And see, you can camp all down in here along the river. There's all down in there. There's like little, it's all primitive camping. I've done that too before. Um, okay, so. I get up there and I'm, I'm going, so you can take that road out, you can go past Timothy Lake and you can come out at, uh, look at all those people camping, jeez, it's a big campsite up there. So like I said, okay, you can take, you can take the road past Timothy Lake and keep going out and then it dumps you out like maybe 10 miles past government camp and then you can take the highway all the way back into Portland. Uh, I think it's 26 or whatever it is. I don't know. Well, all kinds of people camping up here. So I figure, okay, I'm just going to go through. I'm going to pass the lake after I was done, you know, doing photography and stuff. And I go out and I start hitting snow on the road, right? And that's why I mentioned I was in my sports car. So I keep going and going. I mean, I'm way back in here now. You know, it's like I'm literally like five miles from the main highway. And I come around this bend and there's just like it, the snow's just too deep. I mean, there was ruts 
and I was going through ruts already in the snow and, and going through way too much snow than I should have but this one was just too much and I was by myself and there wasn't nobody around and I was like man you know I can't get stuck here that would be retarded so um, I opted out to turn around and come back through so as as I'm coming through okay this okay this is the gate right here and it's open oh geez okay so speak of the devil okay so right here so I'm coming I had to come back okay the snow and oh and some of this is paved now no way it looks so different with it paved it goes from paved to gravel to gravel to paved and then it goes back to paved around the lake but anyways you guys um so I, I'm coming back through. I had to turn around because of snow, obviously. I'm coming back through, and I come up to this gate, and there's a ranger here. Not a ranger. It was a camp host, and they were they, they were locking the gate. And I was like, I was just like tripping out. I was like, what is going on? They're like, wow. They're like, you are so lucky because we were we we're locking the gate right now because um, it, this this is, road is closed. And we don't open it until, you know, like the end of May or whatever, you know, until the snow's gone, until the, the trucks can get through there because they do stocking for the lake up there, for the fish. And I was just like, what in the hell? And I was like, well, what if you guys locked this gate? And I was stuck in there. And they're like, you'd be walking out. And, um, you know, walking out to the nearest person you find to, and there's no cell phone coverage up here. So you'd have to go back out to town somewhere. And um, I don't want to do my map while I'm here. You have to go back out to town and get cell phone coverage to get somebody up here to unlock the gate. I mean, it would have just totally, totally uh, ruined my day. But anyways, it was a crazy story. It was just in the nick of time. And uh, but yeah, it's really, really nice up there. So we're going to go up this road. I'm going to pull up my map right now. And I think we can get through here. There's a bunch of roads up here. And I think all these people are going to Timothy Lake. Because I'm, well, I was on the 26th for the entrance on the other side of Timothy Lake. And that road was still closed a couple weeks ago. So, I don't know. It, you know, it is May now. It's May 2nd or whatever, so. Drop a pin. That's a ridge up here, man. I don't know about this. We're going to see. And around that way? What? You don't want to cut up through here, huh? That's interesting. You know, and I have noticed people, well, I'm going to go that way then. And go up there and see what happens. I want to check this out anyways through here. This is when it kind of starts getting a little more off the beaten path, this little stretch in between here. Some kind of station there too, but... Now we'll get to Timothy Lake and I'm going to have to change these GoPro batteries because it's dead. So, you can see the battery lights on now. Anyways, catch you guys at Timothy Lake. So we're right by the dam right here. So I'm gonna cruise up real quick and show you guys the lake. And cause going across the dam, well, it's not really sunrise anymore, but um, going across the dam at sunrise, um, it's pretty, pretty nice. So that's a pretty big dam. Like I said, it's a pretty big lake. So we'll go check the lake out and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna go see how far we can get up this road. And hopefully we won't get stuck back here today. We're not getting stuck on the motorcycle. <laughs> so that's closed off. Man, they are just totally blocking everything up man crazy here's the dam across the dam and come back around Some people back there fishing so oh yeah this is a very popular spot for crawdadding people come up here it's like that bucket out there floating um, it's probably a crawdad trap this lake is full of crawdads. And this is actually a good place to fish right here by the dam. I've caught a lot of fish here. You can just sit right here on the shore and cook them up. So there's the, the dam. It's, sometimes they got this flowing a lot more, but there's already snow patches here and there. So we're probably gonna get snow in here. Anyways, sometimes when they're letting a lot of water out, man, the water just shoots up so high. 
down there. It's pretty sweet to watch, but anyways, Timothy Lake, there's, and then there's campgrounds off on this side of the lake, and then you can disperse camp, kind of disperse camp. It's not really because they're they're numbered, but they're undeveloped, and I've done that too. And there's only two ways to get over there. Um, and one is by boat or you got to hike back in there so it's pretty cool those are usually the last ones left open but um, I've taken my boat before you just load up all your camping gear you, you launch over there there's a launch ramp right there and then you could just drive across the lake or boat across the lake and pull it to shore and camp get all your stuff off the boat right there on shore it's fun it's a lot of fun so all right let's see where we can go on this road tree crossing all right long straight road we hit some it's quite a bit of a uh, snow snow patches back there I don't think I was filming but there's snow up here we might be on a south facing slope right now, I think. Oh boy, here we go. So I just wish like I had crash bars. I wouldn't be so skeptical about going through stuff like this. We'll see how this goes. But I just got a feeling that we're going to get back up in here and it's just going to be too much snow. But we'll see. Makes you wonder why there's a patch of snow just right here. Like, why right there? promising. Dang it. I just don't know about all this. Like I always wonder if we just get past one little hump and just see like it might change around the corner and be good. But I don't think there's going to be a way to get through this next one. I had another partner here or something so we could help each other if we get stuck is it starting to rain? no
think we're going any further. Had to dig out a little bit. But uh, thank God we're on. Thank goodness we're going downhill. I could just stay in this rut. I think I'll be able to back it out. Well, I tried, but it's just, and it's going to get deeper right in that next section, but then it looks like the next section further up is even shallower, and then who knows, maybe I could crest over. If I had a shovel, I, might, I would probably dig this out, so that's maybe one thing I need to bring is a little shovel. Oh, yeah. All right, we're doing okay now, I think. All right, yeah, we tried, but still just too much snow up here. Whew. All right, we'll head back down. Yeah, shovel. Maybe dropping the tire pressure a little bit could get through stuff like that. So it wasn't too crazy. But this stuff is slippery. Skyline Snow Park. Look at that. I was telling you guys, there's some snowmobiling action up here. Yeah, so there's just all kinds of roads and trails up through here. kind of want to go around Timothy Lake and see if the road's closing. I know it's, it's got to be closed, especially with this shit going on. I'm probably not even going to bother opening. So somebody probably cut the gate open or cut the lock to get this gate open here. I don't know. So they could go up here and fish at the lake. <laughs> so hopefully it's still open when we get back. Beautiful view nice up here always like coming up here it's cool how like you know on a it's fun in a car okay but on a motorcycle it just seems like you you take in more of your surroundings than you do on in a car you know and of course you got you know you got the smells and and all that stuff to add to it or sometimes in a car if you got the windows rolled up or whatever the AC on then you can't smell stuff yeah, it's just really nice up here. And this is like, you know, it's not that far out of town. Chopping wood. That's a crazy horror movie truck. Back in the woods in Oregon, in that truck with chainsaws. <laughs> Gotta love it. So there's, there's some traffic up here. Not near as much as there would be like when this place is open in the summertime, man. There's a lot of traffic and that's why I'm sure they paved most of this road. They'll probably eventually pave this part too because it gets really dusty. Disgustingly dusty on this road on the weekends here. In fact, when we get, I'm gonna show you guys on the pavement part where they paved, that's next to where it used to be dirt. And you guys can see all the buildup of dust on the on the asphalt, it's crazy. I pulled my boat through here a couple times. 
and man it just totally kicks everything in dust and of course your cars and tires oh shoot make sure all my luggage is still back there <laughs> bunch of rocks right there crazy like makes you wonder like why in the hell is there just a section of big ass boulders like that right here pretty awesome I don't know if you guys can see the dust build up here on the side of the road this is gonna be the new section that they paved and you can even see it like on the leaves and stuff and the trees like they're just all dusty and crazy now this is the new section they paved so the river down there trying to rain on us you can hear it that's one thing i like about being out here in the woods when it rains like this you can, it's so loud when it rains because it's hitting everything you know i don't know if you guys can hear it but it sounds really cool anyways i put my rain pants on we're not too far from being out of here um so it's not the end of the world not the end of the world but i don't have so this jacket I have is that's two liners that go inside of it. So you have the outer shell that holds all the pads, and then you have a, a rain liner, and then you have an insulative uh, liner. So the warm and then the wet, and then you take it all out. So I just have the insulated liner in here right now. I don't have the rain liner in. The rain liner is in my baggage, but. I opted to not put that in. I don't think we're going to be in a torrential downpour. So, sorry if there's water on the lens. I keep trying to wipe it, but it just keeps raining. <laughs> it's dark back in here. And it's all clouded up, trying to rain. Yep, that's rain. I guess I'm glad I put my pants on. I don't have too far to get home, but I don't know if it's going to be raining get home but maybe I'll get to try these out on wet pavement my, my tires definite improvement off-road I'd love what this I'd love to see what they can do if they're aired down a little bit I'm sure we'll get a little more improvement off-road and even on-road they plant better on-road so I have a feeling they're gonna do better on the wet too than those stock tires so Anyways, guys, I guess I'm going to call it quits on this video. It's pretty much pavement from here on out. And uh, it's raining, so I'm sure the lens is all messed up. <laughs> so you're probably looking at a bunch of water spots on your screen. But anyways, guys, if you guys are still watching and hanging out, not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do me a favor and hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to hit uh, 3,000 subscribers by the end of 2020. I'll be doing more of this stuff. This was, a, you know, this is like a, like a test run kind of for my bike and my luggage. And it's kind of like a little backyard camping trip, you know what I mean? Um, just a test run, basically. I wanted to test out my stove and everything. And that little thing kicked butt. I'm really happy with that. And, uh, you know, test my gear out and see how the capacity and everything is and how it holds it. And, you know just an overall test so and it went well there's a couple things I want to change and I need to see I almost want my backpack with everything else that's on the bike I almost want my backpack and I have a two liter bladder that could go in there but I left that at home and then I was gonna take uh, more bottled little bottled water oh. but I kind of forgot that anyways I need to find a way to carry more water on the bike because I really only have enough room for like one day worth of water. If that, I need, you know, or yeah, around there. You know, if it was hot, I would have drank all my water. But you know, I still have water left and Gatorade that I brought, so it's not the end of the world. But I want to carry more water just in general when I go out like this. 
and and food so i don't know i gotta maybe get some different storage or something rather i don't know or um explore different food options i know a lot of you guys that could do this use um the dehydrated food it comes in the packets or whatever and that might be a easier way to just you know haul food or whatever so but anyways folks that's gonna wrap it up i appreciate you guys watching if you're still watching all that good stuff until next time oregon motorcycle <laughs>